Uh, good day to everyone. Good day. Thank you very much for a nice uh, warm welcome. Uh, we welcome everyone here in the studio audience, as well as all those who are joining us on the internet. Maybe watching it by means of incmedia.org on your smartphones, through the uh, uh, Facebook pages that we have, uh, or also maybe on Channel 49, INC TV in the Philippines. Thank you all so very much for joining us in this episode of... That's in the Bible! You know, dear friends, as uh, people in Africa go through, uh, as people in Africa go through, well, so many trials brought about by um, massive droughts, uh, intense wars, and other kinds of violence, and other kinds of uh, societal challenges. We found a lot of questions coming out of Africa that were sent into our program, and there was one that was very, seemed to be very prominent on the mind of our fellow men there in the continent of Africa. There was one common question that we heard, and uh, it, was, it was voiced out by uh, uh, Brighton in uh, Africa. Let, let's take a look at Brighton's question. I'm very interested to see Jesus come again. Uh, my question is, I would like to know when is he coming back? We're very thankful to Brighton for uh, his question, but it wasn't only Brighton who uh, posed uh, that kind of question. The same question was asked by uh, several others uh, in that part of the world. Let's, took a, uh, let's take a look at just one more. I just want to know when is Jesus coming, because we're still waiting. Jonathan says, well, when is Jesus coming back? We're, we're still waiting. Well, thank you, Brighton. Thank you, Jonathan, and all the others there who sent questions to us here in this program that's in the Bible. First of all, uh, we, would, uh, we would like to, to ask, do we have even a reason to believe that Jesus will, in fact, return? Because the question is, when will he return? Should we believe that he's going to return? Did he have anything to say specifically about that? Let's, uh, let's turn to the writings uh, written in the book of John, wherein a very important quote from the Lord Jesus is uh, recorded here. John 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So what do you say, studio audience? Do we have a reason to believe that Jesus will in fact return? Yes. Sure. Why? Because? That's it. Yeah, Jesus said it himself. That's recorded here in the Holy Scriptures. He said he's preparing a place for us and he will come back and he, and he, will, he will get us. What does it mean he's just going to come back and, and get us? No, not, not merely that. There's something else we need to know. We know that in, in the book of Jude, for example, it, there was a prophecy there recorded in a Jude 1, 14 and 15 that the Lord said he would return and he mentioned there the purpose. It's to execute judgment. And that's also recorded here in, uh, in the book of Acts. Acts uh, 17, 31. Let's go ahead and read that. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. He will return, will return to execute judgment. Jesus is coming back, and He's coming back to get us. And when He comes, He's going to execute judgment upon all. But wait a minute. The question of Brighton and the question of Jonathan, what was the question again? One word? When. They wanted to know when. Studio audience, you want to know when also? Yes. You, 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 want, uh, you want a calendar date? You want a, you want a, a date? You want me to say uh, October, uh, September, November? I would love to be able to do that. That would really be nice. But again, 
we open up the scriptures. Does anyone have a calendar date on the return of our Lord Jesus to execute judgment? Matthew chapter 24. Let's, let's take a look at what's uh, recorded here. Uh, there was a lot recorded here in the book of Matthew about the, uh, the day of uh, judgment. 24, 36, Jesus said, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Can we give you a calendar date? No. Can't do that. Why not? Jesus said, no one knows that calendar date. No one, no one can give a countdown. Ten, nine, eight, here he's coming, get ready. No, can't do that. So how are we going to answer the question of Brighton? How are we going to answer the question of Jonathan? How are we going to answer that question to all those in the world that want to know the, the return of our Lord Jesus Christ? You know, it's not only Brighton and Jonathan that posed that question. You know, in the first century, the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, they they asked that question directly to Jesus themselves. Let, let's take a look at where, uh, where that question was posed. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, verse 3, what did they ask Jesus? Later, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, some of his followers went to speak to him privately. Tell us, they inquired, when will all these things happen? And what will happen to alert us that you are soon coming again and that the end of the age is near? Well, the disciples asked that question also. It's not only Brighton, it's not only Jonathan and others, but there, there was uh, the disciples himself. Did Jesus answer by giving a calendar date when the disciples asked him? Oh, no. But in verse 33, he did respond. In the same way, when you see all these things beginning to happen, realize that the end is near, right at the door. So Jesus didn't ignore their question. He said, all right, okay, he, he didn't give them a calendar date, but you're going to see certain things, and when you see these certain things, you're going to know that the time of the end is right there, right at the very doors. It's, it's, well, what were the things that, when we see those things happening, we'll know that we are living in that time frame referred to by Jesus as the time when the end is at hand. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 6, 7, and 8, the signs given by Jesus were enumerated like this. And you will hear of wars and rumors of more wars, but don't be alarmed. All of these events must take place, but they do not mean that the end has come. Because when the end is actually approaching, many nations will rise up and war against many other nations, and kingdoms against other kingdoms. And there will be famines, disease epidemics, and earthquakes in various places. But even these are only the beginning of the birth pangs. Jesus identified very specific signs. There would be earthquakes in various places. There would be wars, kingdoms embattled against one another, disease epidemics. He gave a list of circumstances that when we would see those things happening, we would know that the end is at hand. Now here's the thing. Sometimes people will, people will say, and, and you know, right, rightfully so, Hey, there's always been earthquakes. You can look back in history and see all kinds of earthquakes have taken uh, place over the centuries. There's, there's been wars and skirmishes among uh, people uh, ever since history began being uh, recorded. Disease epidemics and things like that. Well and true. No, no, one, can, uh, no one can deny, deny that. But the scholars who translated uh, the prophecies of our Lord Jesus uh, into English, make note of a very important truth regarding those predictions of our Lord Jesus Christ, which make the time frame referred to here in these signs very specific. Here's what the scholars uh, cited in the footnote to Matthew uh, 24, which we have just uh, read. I quote, 
Wars between nations or even between kingdoms is and has been a common occurrence. History has recorded famines at various times. There have been times of great disease epidemics. There have been earthquakes in the past, but increasingly so in the present day. Jesus tells his disciples, however, to be awaiting a specific time during which all of these phenomena would be in evidence at the same time. The first such time in world history occurred during the years of World War I, 1914 through 1918, and immediately following. It may be that the answer to Bright Brighton's question Jonathan's question and that question that's posed by so many may not have been given a calendar date in the answer of Jesus. But nearly as specific as a calendar date can be, he told them to watch for these signs. And these signs have taken place beginning in 1914, simultaneously, the first time in human history, which tells us we are living, all of us in this studio audience, all of those watching this program on your smartphone, all of those watching Channel 49, INC TV in the Philippines, or on incmedia.org, that's in the Bible program, broadcast all over the world. All of us are living at a time when the end is near. But, one more, one more important evidence before we, we finish up for today, I, I would like to uh, read also from Apostle Paul. And as I read this, I would like to ask everyone in the audience everywhere to think and consider, have you met, have you experienced people in our time fulfilling precisely the description I'm about to read from Apostle Paul? What did he have to say about the character of people in the times when the end is near. In uh, uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, we'll read through verse 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. What was the prediction here of Apostle Paul? He predicted the character of people, a character of people that would be unholy, unthankful, disobedient, loving pleasure more than loving God. You, you heard, you could see the, the description. I asked you before I read that, do, we, do you know anyone like that? Do you know people in this world who fulfill those kind of character traits? Sure, all of us do. And, and what does that tell us? It tells us not only that the Bible is true, it tells us we are living at the time when the day of judgment is so very near. But here's, here's the thing. Even if we did have a calendar date, if, we don't, if mankind doesn't know what they need to do while we're waiting for that day of judgment, so we're not, just, we're not just supposed to be just sitting here waiting for the day of ju judgment, twiddling our thumbs and waiting for it. What, what should we be doing right now? Because that moment could come at, at, at any time. What's the instruction of Jesus? Again, we turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Jesus said, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. What's the expectation of Jesus? Just sit and wait, twiddle our thumbs. What are we supposed to do, everyone? Get ready, be ready, absolutely. Because even if we knew the exact date, 
Even if there was a calendar, or even if there was a countdown, let's say, 10, 9, 8, Jesus is coming, get ready. If we don't know what to do at that moment, even if we knew the exact moment, but we're not ready for the moment, knowing it would be useless. So we've got to know how to be ready for it. Do you agree that's the, uh, such a great uh, and, and valuable knowledge to have? How to be ready for that? Sure. How do we prepare? How do we prepare ourselves for that, for that day? Apostle Peter gives to us this instruction in uh, 2 Peter 3, 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless. There's the answer of the Bible, dear friends. How can we be ready for the return of the Lord Jesus? He said, be ready. Be found at peace. We have to be found at peace on the day of judgment. And there's a lot of people that are claiming that they will uh, bring you peace. Life coaches, self, lots of self-help gurus and the like. But the Bible tells us what peace is referred to here, that one must seek, one must be found in that state of peace when the Lord Jesus returns. Colossians 3.15 answers this way. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. We've got to be found on that day at peace. And those people who are at peace with God are being called and brought into the one body of Christ, which is why we so often read in this program, Colossians 1.18, what's being referred to as that body into which people are brought so they can have peace with God. We read Colossians 1.18. That body is what? Studio audience? The church. That's the church. That's the church. We can see plainly written there that the body referred to is none other than the church. And it, that's the church that Christ himself built. It's the church that he himself is the head of. And the Bible teaches it to be none other than the church of Christ, for which he has shed his blood. Those who are ready then for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ are inside the church of Christ. When you are ready to learn more, about how you too can be inside the church of Christ, how you, can too, how you too can be ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you're ready to learn more about the fundamental teachings found here inside the church of Christ, we encourage you, visit incmedia.org. There you're going to find the various series of uh, programs dedicated to answering all of your spiritual questions. There at incmedia.org you will also find a directory of all the local congregations of the Church of Christ around the world. You can find the one that is nearest to your home. You can go there, pose these and so many more questions to the ministers that are there waiting for you. They will lead you in Bible studies just like we have begun. We've only scratched the surface with a couple of questions that came to us from Africa. Go there incmedia.org, look up the local congregation there, the address that's nearest to your home. Go there, join with us serving and worshiping God. You can also email to us your video questions to answers at incmedia.org. Visit our Facebook pages, Iglesia Ni Cristo Media. Join us here inside the Church of Christ. We want to thank our studio audience today for joining us in our, in our study. We want to thank uh, everyone for, uh, who might be watching us on the internet or Channel 49, INC TV, or anywhere else you are, are tuning in from. Thank you for joining us in this taping. I hope you have uh, enjoyed the moments we have shared together, but more than that, I hope 
you have learned the truths that we embrace. And why do we embrace these truths? Because? That's in the Bible. Thank you very much, studio audience. Thank you very much. Thank you all. We'll see you next time.